Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my third and final week of an abbreviated teaching on the believer's authority. And I've started talking about spiritual warfare, fighting against the devil. And you really need to take all of this in its proper context because I've spent quite a bit of time showing that Satan's only power and authority is the authority that we gave him. He's using human authority and power that was given by God to Adam and Eve, and we yielded that to him, and we made him the God of this world. Men originally were the God of this world. And so we are the ones that empowered the devil, and this means he cannot do anything to us without our consent and cooperation. Those are major points. And what I want to begin to do is to counter some of the religious teaching against spiritual warfare. And yesterday I gave some stories about how I came from believing that there were no demons in America. If they existed, they must be in some ancient tribe in the darkest corner of Africa or something like that. And I came from believing that nothing was demonic. And then when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and became aware of the Holy Spirit, I also became aware of the demonic realm and I went too far the other direction. And I got into all of this weird spiritual warfare where you had to bind and loose and do all of these things. And you know, there's a balance between this. Everything is not natural and organic and physical. There are spiritual forces, but not everything is spiritual. There are some things that are only physical and natural. And there is a balance between these two. And I think that, you know, people tend to be like a pendulum. They, they start way over here, they're out of balance. And when you get set free from that, instead of coming back to the center and being balanced, instead you tend to go past it to the other side and it goes like this. And so there is a balance, and I don't know how to just draw this perfectly, but I have come to realize some things about the, the teaching on spiritual warfare that I believe is completely inaccurate, and that's what I'm trying to counter this week. In Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice right here, this is talking about spiritual warfare. And if you go on and read, it says in the 12th verse, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. And it starts talking about the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. Have your loins girt about with truth and the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. And it lists all of these things. So this is a warfare scripture. This is talking about that we aren't just fighting people. It's not just natural things. There are spiritual, supernatural things. And I agree with that. But notice, it prefaced all of this by saying, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word wiles here is meaning the lies, the deception, the cunningness, the craftiness of the devil. This parallels exactly what Satan had to do with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, he didn't come and occupy a mammoth and put his foot on Eve's head and say, submit or I'll crush you. He didn't come through a lion, a bear, a tiger and try and intimidate them because he had no authority against mankind to make them do anything. Instead, he chose the most subtle, the most cunning, crafty, sly, deceptive animal that there was, the serpent because he had no power to force them to do anything. Likewise, Satan does not have a superior authority to you. You are the one with the power and the authority over the devil. And Satan can only come against you with deception, with lies. That's his only power. This is the reason that Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The reason the truth makes you free because Satan's only power is deception. And once you know the truth, deception has no power. Deception, the only power in deception is that you're deceived and don't know it. Once you know the truth, then the power of the enemy is totally broken. 
SO I BELIEVE IN SPIRITUAL WARFARE, BUT I DON'T BELIEVE THAT WE ARE PHYSICALLY OR EVEN SPIRITUALLY BATTLING THESE DEMONIC POWERS DIRECTLY. WHAT WE'RE DOING IS WE ARE DOING WAR IN OUR MIND. HERE'S ANOTHER VERSE THAT SAYS BASICALLY THE SAME THING OVER IN uh, 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 10 AND VERSE 3 THROUGH 5. IT SAYS, uh, FOR THOUGH WE WALK IN THE FLESH, WE DO NOT WAR AFTER THE FLESH. FOR THE WEAPONS OF OUR WARFARE ARE NOT CARNAL. HERE IT IS TALKING ABOUT WARFARE. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT SPIRITUAL WARFARE. THE WEAPONS OF OUR WARFARE ARE NOT CARNAL, BUT MIGHTY THROUGH GOD TO THE PULLING DOWN OF STRONGHOLDS, CASTING DOWN IMAGINATIONS AND EVERY HIGH THING THAT exalteth ITSELF AGAINST THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD AND BRINGING INTO CAPTIVITY EVERY THOUGHT TO THE OBEDIENCE OF CHRIST. SO HERE'S ANOTHER SCRIPTURE THAT'S DEALING WITH SPIRITUAL WARFARE, AND NOTICE THAT WHAT YOU'RE DOING IS CASTING DOWN STRONGHOLDS, CASTING DOWN IMAGINATIONS, THAT'S A THOUGHT PROCESS OF THE MIND, AND EVERY HIGH THING THAT EXALTS ITSELF AGAINST THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD. HERE IT IS TALKING ABOUT THE WAY YOU THINK AND BRINGING INTO CAPTIVITY EVERY THOUGHT TO THE OBEDIENCE OF CHRIST. I BELIEVE IN SPIRITUAL WARFARE, BUT REALLY, YOU ARE NOT DEALING DIRECTLY WITH THE DEMONS. YOU'RE DEALING WITH THE LIES AND THE DECEPTION. THAT'S THE ONLY INROAD THAT SATAN HAS TO ANY PERSON. LET ME JUST MAKE SOME APPLICATIONS HERE TO MAKE SURE THAT YOU GET THIS. BUT THERE ARE PEOPLE TODAY TEACHING THAT THERE ARE DEMONIC POWERS OUT HERE THAT ARE JUST CONTROLLING PEOPLE AND MAKING THESE PEOPLE ACT A CERTAIN WAY. AND DO IT. AND SO YOU WILL FIND SOME CHRISTIANS WHO ARE INTO SPIRITUAL WARFARE THAT THEY BELIEVE THAT THE ANSWER TO CHANGING OUR SOCIETY IS JUST DOING BATTLE IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM, PRAYING AND REBUKING THE DEVIL AND BINDING THESE DEMONIC POWERS. AND IF WE COULD JUST BIND ENOUGH DEMONIC POWERS, THEN PEOPLE WOULD BE FREE. NOW DON'T GET ME WRONG, I DO NOT DOUBT THAT THERE IS PLENTY OF DEMONIC ACTIVITY. I DON'T DOUBT THAT WE MEET DEMON-POSSESSED PEOPLE EVERY DAY. SO I'M NOT SAYING THAT THERE ISN'T A DEMONIC REALM AND THAT THERE ISN'T DEMONIC POWERS, BUT WHAT I AM SAYING IS THAT YOU JUST DON'T GO DIRECTLY TO THE DEMONS AND BIND THEM AND COME AGAINST THEM. THE ONLY REASON DEMONS HAVE ANY CONTROL OVER PEOPLE IS BECAUSE OF THE DECEPTION, THE WILES, THE LIES, THE THOUGHTS THAT THEY HAVE GOTTEN THOSE INDIVIDUALS TO ADOPT. AND IF YOU REALLY WANT TO SEE PEOPLE SET FREE, YOU JUST DON'T GO ATTACK THE DEVIL AND GO TO BINDING THE DEVIL. WHAT YOU DO IS PREACH THE TRUTH TO THE PEOPLE, BRING THEM OUT OF THIS DECEPTION, GET THEM TO QUIT ACCEPTING AND RECEIVING THESE LIES THAT SATAN HAS PUT FORTH, AND THEY WILL BE FREE. SO I BELIEVE THAT THERE ARE DEMONIC POWERS. I BELIEVE THAT WE ARE IN A SPIRITUAL BATTLE, JUST LIKE IT SAYS IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER 6, THAT I'M NOT WRESTLING AGAINST FLESH AND BLOOD. YOU KNOW, I CAN SEE THIS CONSTANTLY, ALL OF THE TIME. I JUST RECENTLY TAUGHT A SERIES ON TELEVISION ABOUT CHRISTIAN PHILOSOPHY, AND I GOT INTO SOME SOCIAL ISSUES AND GOT TO TALKING ABOUT EVOLUTION, GOT TO talk, uh, TALKING AGAINST EVOLUTION AND FOR CREATIONISM. I SPOKE AGAINST HOMOSEXUALITY AND AGAINST ABORTION. AND DID YOU KNOW, I MEAN, THERE WERE PEOPLE THAT GOT HIGHLY UPSET. THERE'S PEOPLE THAT CRITICIZED AND THINGS. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? I'M AWARE THAT IT'S NOT JUST THAT PERSON. IT'S THERE IS A SPIRIT OF ANTICHRIST IN OUR WORLD TODAY. THIS WHOLE POLITICALLY CORRECT DEAL TO WHERE YOU CAN'T OFFEND ANYBODY AND DO ALL THIS, IT'S A SPIRIT OF ANTICHRIST. THEY ARE AGAINST MORALITY AND THEY ARE TRYING TO SILENCE ANYBODY WHO HAS A MORAL COMPASS AND SAYS THIS IS RIGHT AND THIS IS WRONG, AND IT'S A SPIRIT OF ANTICHRIST. THERE ISN'T A SPIRIT OF ANTI-BUDDHA. THERE'S NOT A SPIRIT OF ANTI-MUSLIM. AGAIN, THERE WILL BE PEOPLE WITH THE SPIRIT OF ANTICHRIST THAT GET UPSET AT ME FOR SAYING THIS, BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? IN THE RECENT PRESIDENT uh, ADMINISTRATION, THEY HAVE OUTLAWED THE DAY OF... I mean, WELL, THEY HAVEN'T OUTLAWED IT. THEY HAVE QUIT ENDORSING THE NATIONAL DAY OF PRAYER. THEY QUIT HAVING IN SHIRLEY DOBSON IS THE FIRST PRESIDENT AND I COULDN'T TELL YOU EXACTLY, BUT I THINK FOR DECADES THAT HASN'T HONORED THE NATIONAL DAY OF PRAYER AND RECOGNIZED THAT AMERICA IS A CHRISTIAN NATION AND THE OBAMA ADMINISTRATION HAS CHOSEN TO REJECT ALL OF THAT AND THEY SAY THAT THAT'S PARTISAN, THEY DON'T WANT TO DO THAT AND SO THEY HAVE NOT CONDONED, THEY REFUSE TO PARTICIPATE AND PROMOTE THE NATIONAL DAY OF PRAYER AND YET THEY'VE COME OUT 
and they have acknowledged and welcomed in the Muslim clerics and leaders to honor every single Muslim holiday. And you know what? There is a spirit of antichrist. It's against the Lord. It's against morality. The devil is not fighting the Muslims. He's not fighting the Hindus and the Buddhists because those things work to his advantage. But Christianity is a true worship of God. And I guarantee you there is a spirit of antichrist that is prevalent in our world today. So I acknowledge that these things exist. So what do we do about it? Well, there's a large segment of the body of Christ that what they're doing is getting into their prayer closet and they're praying and they're rebuking and binding the spirit of Antichrist and binding these demonic powers. And I'm just saying this as bluntly as I can because I haven't got time to beat around the bush. You may not like it, but you know what? At least you'll understand what I'm saying. That is not the way to do it. Let me say it this way, that you go to the Bible and look in the New Testament and you cannot find one single example of people fighting the ungodliness of their day the way that the modern spiritual warfare people fight ungodliness in our day. There isn't a single example. Jesus never sent his disciples into an area to do warfare and pray over these things and bind this stuff. Now, he did send his disciples in front of him to announce that he was coming like, publicity, uh, marketing. And he did do that, but he didn't send his disciples in to bind the devils and to rebuke all of this kind of stuff. There is no such thing as, like today, I actually know people that because of this scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, where it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I actually know people that have climbed mountains, that have gone up into skyscrapers. Some have even rented planes so that they could fly over a city and do battle with the spiritual warfare in heavenly places. That, just excuse me for being blunt, but that is absolutely silly. It's stupid. I don't doubt that there are demonic powers, but you don't have to climb a mountain or get into a skyscraper or rent a plane or parachute or do something to deal with them. And plus, you can't find any instance in the Bible where Paul ever did this. Paul went into like Ephesus. And in Ephesus, there was the temple of the great goddess Diana. And they believed that this was a statue that fell from heaven and they worshiped this demon goddess. And um, there was over a thousand priestesses who were prostitutes that when you went to the temple in Ephesus to worship, part of the temple worship was to have sex with these priest, priestess prostitutes, a thousand of them. And this whole city was taken up with this pagan worship and this idolatry and this... Uh, all of this sexual lust and things like this. Paul never sent his disciples. There's not a single instance of him having his people pray and bind and do spiritual warfare and do all of this kind of stuff. You know how he changed that? Within two or three years, he went in and he began to start preaching the gospel. And the religious people uh, criticized him for it. And so he separated the disciples. And for three years, he taught daily and he taught the gospel and people's lives were being changed. This, these wiles of the devil, the deception that had held them in bondage was being countered. And as they got free, they began to start going out and sharing with other people. So much so that it says that all of Asia heard the gospel because of Paul preaching the truth. And as people got set free from these lies and turned from the demon worship, it got so bad that Demetrius, one of the silversmiths, who made a lot of money off selling little statues of Diana, he brought Paul and some of his people before the authorities and he started a riot and uh, tried to get them expelled because his whole business had gone bad. There was, people weren't buying idols anymore because they had been shared the truth and been set free. So how did Paul change this? He didn't change it by somebody just praying and rebuking and binding. He preached the truth. And as people learned the truth, then they quit believing a lie. And that's how he broke Satan's power. But did you know that there's a group 
I can't remember the exact uh, time that this happened. I'm not even going to attempt to say unless somebody criticized me for getting my facts wrong. But I can tell you this, that there's a group from right here in Colorado Springs that taught all of this spiritual warfare that you had to just bind. You had to spend huge amounts of time in intercession. And they even sent people over to foreign countries to do what they call prayer walks. And they would just walk through areas that were controlled by the Muslims or the Buddhist or the Hindu or whatever. And there wasn't much Christianity influence. And they would have people just walk through and pray under their breath and bind these demonic things. And I even asked them, I said, so do they witness to the people? Do they share tracts with them? They, oh, no, we don't do any of that. We're only do, doing spiritual warfare. Let me just be real blunt and say that that is useless. That is, there is not a single example of that in Scripture where you go and you only bind demonic things. Now, there's still a place to rebuke demons. If you listened, last week I gave how to pray for a lost person and I talked about binding the God of this world who has blinded their eyes, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, and the spirit of the world that works in the children of disobedience, Ephesians chapter 2. And I talked about some of those things. There is a place to bind the devil. But you cannot find a single instance where Jesus sent out his disciples to just do prayer walks and pray, but never tell a person the truth. Never preach to them. Never share the truth. That's not how Paul evangelized Ephesus. That's not how anybody has done anything. There isn't a single reference in the New Testament instructing us to go and pray only. There are people today that say they are called to the ministry of intercession. And I know that there's people watching this program that are just shocked and say, that's me. This is what God has given me to do. I don't think, I think that it's okay to pray for people. I think that there's some good done. But I'm telling you that there is no person, there is no such thing in the Bible as a ministry of intercession. Every Christian is supposed to intercede and pray for others. And every Christian is supposed to stand in the gap. But for a one person to do nothing but just pray, and that's all you do, and you will, you will pray for your neighbors but you would never go share the gospel with them. You would never tell them the truth. You don't put any importance on preaching the gospel. You're just ignoring the scriptures that says God chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them which are lost. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not come through prayer and intercession. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And if you are going to really make an impact, you have to get out of your prayer closet. There's a time to pray. There's a time to stand in rebuke. But I guarantee you, it's the way I liken it is like prayer is like water. That when you plant a seed, you have to water it. You have to nourish it. You have to pull the weeds. There's things that you have to do. But until you plant the seed, you can't do anything. Nothing is going to grow if there isn't a seed in the ground. Likewise, the Word of God is the seed. 1 Peter 1, 23 says that you are born again, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the Word of God that lives and abides forever. The Word of God is like a seed. You and I were born from a seed. It wasn't a virgin birth. The stork didn't bring us. A seed was planted. Likewise, for a person to be born again, the seed of God's Word has to be planted. Now, once the seed is planted, you have to water it and you have to take care of it. But it does no good whatsoever to water barren ground where there's no seed. Likewise, it does no good whatsoever for you to intercede for a per person to be born again, to be set free, to be changed, if there isn't a seed that's been planted. You've got to plant the seed. We, you're born again through the Word, not through prayer. Now, once you share the Word with a person, then you can intercede that they will be receptive to it. You can bind the devil that would try and come and steal it from them, and there's things that you can do. Prayer is like water... Once the seed is planted, then there is a place for that. But I'm saying that there are many people today that have elevated intercession, spiritual warfare to the place that they believe they're called to do nothing but pray. They don't ever share the truth. They don't ever plant a seed. They don't ever pray that laborers will come across their path. All they do is just pray. And they think that this nation is going to be changed by prayer. 
The, way, the thing that this nation has to have happen to change this nation or any nation is not to just bind the demonic powers over that nation that I do believe exist. But you have to counter the lies, the deception, the wiles, the deceit, the lies of the devil. You've got to counter that with the truth. And as people receive the truth, then they disempower all of these demonic things. They are the ones that stop it by no longer believing. But as long as a person is deceived and, and embracing a lie, you can bind the demonic power all you want to and that person is empowering this devil to control them and to dominate them. So there is a place for intercession. There is a place for just casting out devils and taking your ground and taking your authority. There is a place, but it's not the place that the spiritual warfare movement has given. We have to recognize that Satan is empowered by the individual. If there wasn't people cooperating with the devil and believing his lies and speaking forth his lies and deception, Satan would be dead in the water. So what we need for a revival in the United States or in any, in any nation is not more prayer. And I know that I'm upsetting a lot of people. I'm countering a lot of stuff, but it's not more prayer. Again, prayer is a part of it. We need to be in communion with God. I'm not saying that we should quit praying, but I'm saying we need more doing. We need more people speaking the truth. We need people standing up and saying that abortion is murder. Homosexuality is perversion that there is right and that there's wrong and that God came to set us free. He's not mad at the sinner, but it is sin. You don't solve the problem by changing what's sin and what isn't sin. You solve the problem by saying this is sin, but God loves you and God wants to forgive you and God can set you free. And we've got to speak the truth. And it's the truth that is going to take away this deception and break the demonic powers. So again, I say that there is zero precedent for the spiritual warfare the way it is being taught in the body of Christ today. There is a group, I'll probably have to get into this tomorrow. I'll just save it for tomorrow because I'm out of time today. But there are some weird, weird things being done today in the name of the Lord, in the name of spiritual warfare. And all it's doing is actually empowering the devil. It's making people demon conscious and it is not helping the situation at all. So I'm teaching this week on that the battle is in your mind. It's not out there in the heavenly someplace. It's not all of these demonic things. Yes, they exist, but the way you overcome them is by the renewing of your mind. I'm out of time today, but I do have a teaching on this. I've got a book entitled The Believer's Authority. I've also got a workbook that goes along with it. And I tell you, these are things that people need to hear.